I am sitting here discussing my problem with myself. I am divorced because of my wife's infidelity. I have been divorced for a year now. I have no children and no close relatives in the neighborhood. I am telling you this because I need another man's wife. I don't know if it is love, need, lust, infatuation, or just desire. I do know that revenge is part of it. You see, I don't know her that well. I see her a lot when I go to lunch. She works in the same building as me. I'm trying to find out as much information about her as I can. I am going to give birth to her, but I am plagued by the question. And then what? It's a terrible feeling in a way. To want someone so badly that I'm willing to take her by force if I have to. At this point, I figured out that she's in her early 30s. Good build. She's married to a loser as far as I can tell. She has no children. Her husband is a loser because he doesn't know what he has and is willing to risk losing her. Worst of all, he ruined my marriage. He entertained my wife and now I'm going to make him pay for it by taking up with his wife. I think if I do that, I'll be doing her a favor. In case you haven't guessed, I'm a psycho. A real son of a bitch. I've been that way ever since I caught my wife cheating on me. One day I got home early from work and just walked into my house. I wasn't paying attention to anything and just went into the bedroom to change. There was my wife lying in the middle of the bed. She saw me and screamed, and the miserable bastard thought he had done a good job on her. I grabbed him by the shoulders and pulled him away from my unfaithful wife. I plopped him on the floor and started beating the living shit out of him. My crazy wife kept screaming. When he started to get up, I dragged him to the door and threw him naked outside. I threw his wallet and car keys on the grass, but not his clothes. He got up, staggered, walked to his car, and drove off. I never saw or heard from him again until fate intervened one day. I returned to the bedroom where my apologetic wife was quickly dressing. She cried, Kevin, things are not what they seemed. Please, let's talk about this. We can work this out. Not what it looked like, I said. It looked like you were entertaining that asshole in our bed. Is that right or not? Please, Kevin, let me explain. I interrupted her. Either you had fun with him or you didn't. Which is it? It's not such a hard question. Just answer it. I waited a few seconds and said, Since it's so hard for you to answer that question, our conversation is over. I'm off to dinner. You have an hour to buy whatever you want and get out of my life. If you're still here when I get back, I'll kick your sorry ass out. That's it, you have one hour. That's the end of this conversation. I then walked out the door. I waited two hours before coming back. I was hoping she'd leave. You see, I am a man of my word. I would do what I promised, even though she is my wife. When I got home, she was gone, and almost all of her personal belongings were gone too. She left me a note. I wasn't even going to read it, but then I thought maybe I should. Note from Rachel. Dear Kevin, I made a mistake, a very big mistake. Jim means nothing to me. He was an old high school friend I ran into. We were lovers back in high school. You knew I wasn't a virgin when we got married. It was Jim who was my first love. Things happen and old memories never die. I met Jim at the mall. I was so happy to see him again. Just as an old friend. He started flirting with me and I started reminiscing about old times. He asked me where I lived and we walked over to the house. I should have known, but I made a mistake. When we got into the house, I showed him around. When we got to the bedroom, he wrapped his arms around me and kissed me. It seemed like old times. Then it happened. We started kissing like we used to, and then he took me. God, I wish it had never happened, but it did. I'm so sorry I hurt you. Please think of me. I promise to be a good wife and never cheat again. I really love you, Kevin. Love always, Rachel. The note hurt me even more. Now this asshole had a name. I loved my wife, but I'm one of those psychos who believes that love can be lost. In my case, it was completely gone. It was replaced by revenge. Revenge isn't necessarily something you want. It's something you just have to do. I would have gotten mine. The next day, I took a day off from work and saw that I needed to change our checking and savings accounts. I called most of the credit card companies and canceled them. I kept the two that were in my name just in case of possible charges. I'm an implacable bastard and I'm not afraid to admit it. You are. Rachel's father called and asked what the problem was between Rachel and me. I got angry and said, what is wrong with you? Don't tell me you didn't have the courage to ask your own daughter. 
So, George, I caught your precious daughter having fun with one of her friends in our bed. I'm not one to forgive, so I threw her out on her ass. She had her chance to take everything she wanted, and I won't give her another dime. If she wants to go to court and air her dirty laundry, that's fine with me. Otherwise, leave me alone. Then I just hung up the phone. Two days later, Karen, Rachel's younger sister, called me and asked if I could talk to her for a few minutes. I told her I was listening. She started to tell me how Rachel was very sorry. Until I interrupted her. I don't care about how sorry Rachel is. Do you have anything else to say? If you say Rachel's name one more time, I'll hang up on you. Your sister is no longer in my life. Karen asked if there were any other personal items left in the house that belonged to her sister. I simply told her that her sister had an hour to take anything she wanted with her. If she forgot anything, that's too bad. Karen mentioned a few things. I was starting to get angry again. So I responded the only way I knew how. Karen, I'll tell you what. You're going to come here and do it on my bed, and I'll let you take whatever else you want for your precious sister. She shouted back, You miserable son of a bitch! How dare you talk to me like that! Wait until I tell my husband and you deal with him. Does that mean I won't get the chance? I always thought you were very good fun. Then send this pathetic excuse for a husband over here. I wasn't afraid of this weakling. He was just a yes man for his wife. I had no doubt I would see him at my door one day. I heard someone on the phone. I knew it was Rachel. Karen must have handed her the phone. All I heard was Kevin, you son of a bitch. Then I just hung up. I contacted my attorney and had him fill out the necessary paperwork without giving Rachel anything. We rented a house, we each had our own car. Other than that, I just kept the savings accounts. Rachel didn't fight the divorce. I made it clear that I wouldn't talk to anyone in the family except Karen, and that was only if she complied with my demands. Hell, I was a hard ass. Karen was a beauty. She looked a little better than her sister Rachel. Both were good women, but Karen was a few years younger and probably a lot less riding, considering her husband was a weakling. I was getting ready to move out of the house and the divorce was already final. I called Karen on the phone and asked if she wanted to pick up some of her sister's personal belongings. That I was moving into an apartment and didn't want to carry her stuff. If she didn't come and pick them up, I would just throw everything away. She quickly agreed that she would come and pick up the stuff tonight. I told her to either come alone or bring that pathetic excuse for a husband with her. Under no circumstances was Rachel to show up at my door. When Karen showed up at my door that evening, she was alone. I asked about her husband, but she said he was busy. I knew what he was really afraid of, and she knew what I was about to do. When she entered the house, we walked to the bedroom where I was packing her sister's things. She reached for one of the boxes when I said, Wait, you haven't paid for that yet. She looked at me and said, You're not serious, are you? I'm not going to make love to you. I laughed. You've been thinking about this for a long time. I said, Come on, Karen, you're not fooling anyone. Anyway, we got down to it. Then I walked over, grabbed a couple boxes of her sister's stuff, and headed to her car. When I got back, she started yelling at me. You son of a bitch, you just use me for your pleasure. How can you be so cold, so callous? What happened to you? Where's the fun-loving Kevin that used to be here? He's dead. Your sister killed him. She did to me what I just did to your husband. I made him a cuckold, a weakling. You got what you wanted, just like your sister. Now take her things and get out of my house. I can't stand cheating wives. You have all your sister's things, so you should have no reason to come back. She called me a bastard, grabbed the last box of stuff, and left my house. She wasn't bad, but I knew I only wanted her to avenge her sister. It seems to be building up inside you. It's all you can think about. To get revenge, to get even, to make the perpetrators pay for what they did. That was my goal. I knew it wouldn't solve my problems. I knew that, but it was what I had to do. Right or wrong, I was going to get revenge. Her name was Carly, a pretty petite girl I saw every day. Sometimes you get an urge, a feeling you can't get rid of. That's what I felt when I saw this girl almost every day. She would come to the restaurant with her girlfriends. They were all laughing and seemed to be enjoying life. One of the girls she had lunch with was named Marsha. I had known her for years. We were friends, but not very close. Sort of a hi, Marsha, how are you kind of thing. Marsha knew about my divorce. In the small community, almost everyone I knew had already heard the rumors. One day when Marsha came to the restaurant alone at lunchtime, I asked her to join me for lunch. 
I wanted to talk to her. She sat down, a little wary. I told her it was just lunch, that I was tired of always eating alone. We talked about her family and how the kids were doing. She told me about her husband's promotion and things in general. She asked me about my life and how things were going after the divorce. Everyone knew that Rachel had cheated on me, but no one knew with whom. If anyone had the nerve to ask, I just said I didn't know who it was and it didn't matter. I asked Marsha about the new girl in their office. She said her name was Carly. She and her husband Jim moved here about a year ago. When she said Jim's name, I felt uneasy. Marsha looked at me and said, Kevin, Carly is a happily married woman. You're not going to flirt with her, are you? Everyone knew about my cool personality after the divorce. I told Marsha that I thought Carly was a beautiful woman and wanted to know who she was. She gave me more information about Jim, and then I had to find out if he was who I thought he was. If he was, then I had no doubt that I was going to entertain Carly. I hated being like this, but I couldn't help it. One day during lunch, I sat in a corner booth with a friend of mine and ate lunch. He never asked me about my personal life. He knew it was for the best, so we got along just fine. While we were eating, Carly and her husband walked in. It was the same son of a bitch I'd caught with my wife. Shit, shit, shit! I wanted to go back and punch his lights out again, but I kept my composure. He never recognized me, having only seen me for a few seconds while I beat the shit out of him. But unfortunately, I did recognize him and went to entertain his wife. One day, when Carly was alone in a restaurant, I struck up a conversation with her. I introduced myself and mentioned that I was friends with Marsha. I wanted to put Carly at ease. She smiled and introduced herself. I asked her if she wanted to sit at the same table. She was a little nervous until I told her that she would have to pay for her own lunch. That made her laugh as we sat down at the table. She spoke passionately about herself and said that her husband Jim had transferred here a little over a year ago. She said that things started off rough, with her husband being jumped by two men and having everything he owned stolen. He had to go to the emergency room and had stitches in his left eye. She said he was in a terrible state when he returned home. She said he filed a police report but couldn't make a good enough description, and the police never caught the perpetrators. That explained why he never turned me in. After lunch, I told her that it was a pleasure to meet her and that if she wanted to sit at the same table, that was fine with me. Now I had a real problem. I liked Carly, I mean I really liked her. I needed revenge and at the same time I didn't want to hurt Carly. What to do, what to do? I had to think about it. I saw her almost every day, most often with other girls from her office. She always looked at me and smiled. One day I told her in passing that I was going to start lunch an hour late, so I probably wouldn't get a chance to have lunch with her again. But the next day, she took her lunch an hour late and was alone. She came over to my table and asked to join me. Of course I agreed, and we started having lunch together almost every day. We became good friends and I began to have strong feelings for her. One day, I stood up and told her that I thought she was one of the most beautiful and sweetest women I had ever met. If she wasn't married, I would ask her out. She got nervous and replied, But I'm married, Kevin. I may not have the best marriage, but I would never cheat on my husband. I couldn't. It's just not right. I had to ask her about that last statement. What's wrong with your marriage? She had tears in her eyes and said she thought her husband was cheating on her, but she wasn't sure. I took her hand and held it for a minute. She was trembling and I tried my best to calm her down. I thought, what kind of asshole would give up such a wonderful woman just to have fun with her? What an idiot. Then I started to wonder if he'd gone back to Rachel. I looked at Carly and told her that I needed to talk to her about something very important. But I couldn't do it here and asked if she would meet me after work. I needed her to trust me enough to go to my apartment where we could talk privately. Kevin, I can't go to your apartment. How will that look? What will people think? I thought about Rachel for a second. Why couldn't she be like this? Carly, it's very important that I talk to you. You are too precious to me not to tell you what I know. Please meet with me. I think I trust you, Kevin. I like you, but I don't know you well enough to be alone with you in an apartment. Can we meet here and talk in the car or at a restaurant? Okay, Carly, let's meet back here after work. I'll even buy you dinner. She smiled at me and said, Boy, I must be pretty important if you're willing to buy dinner. And laughed. I needed to get my thoughts in order. What am I going to say? How would I say it? I didn't want to risk pushing Carly away. I needed her for revenge, but now I needed her too. Yeah, 
tough old son of a bitch Kevin fell in love with someone else's wife. Damn it, that wasn't supposed to happen. I should have just taken her in front of her husband and then laughed at him. Why did it have to be her? God damn it. We met for dinner. She told me that she had talked to Marge and was told about my divorce and how I had caught my wife having sex with another man. She said it must have been horrible to see that in your own home. She said she felt very sorry for me. She was so afraid of finding out the same information about her husband that she didn't know how she would handle it if it happened to her. Carly, I need to tell you a few things about myself. I know you're married, but I'm falling in love with you. Please, Kevin, don't say any more. I'm a married woman. Carly, I need to tell you about this. I need to tell you and you need to listen, please. Like I said, I've fallen in love with you. My problem is that I'm an implacable bastard. The fact that I found my wife and her lover together made me that way. I know you've heard people talk and say what a mean bastard I've become. I can't do anything about it. I wish I could. I always walk around with a stump on my shoulder. My wife, along with her lover, planted the chip. My plan was revenge. I was going to find her lover's wife and do it in front of her husband. Yeah, that son of a bitch was married too. Carly interrupted me. Please, Kevin, you don't need to tell me about this. It's very personal and I know it hurts you to talk about it. I can hear it in your voice. Let me continue, please, Carly. Like I said, I was going to get revenge on my wife's lover. Now I have a big, big problem. It's the woman I've fallen in love with. Carly covered her face with her hands in shock. She knew that this man was her husband, and the woman I had fallen in love with was her. Tears rolled down Carly's face. Oh my God, this is so hard to believe. How do you know? How can you be so sure? Were you going to do this to get back at my husband? She cried even harder. I wanted to hug her to comfort her, but she stopped me. Please don't touch me now, she said. I need time to think. Carly, a year ago I found a man in my bedroom. I beat the crap out of him and threw him out of the house with no clothes on. All I knew was that his name was Jim. Then I pulled the note Rachel had left me out of my pocket. For some strange reason, I kept it. I held it out to Carly for her to read. She cried as she read it. I've watched you for the past six months as you went down to the restaurant to have lunch. Day after day, I waited to meet you. You were the only bright spot in my life and I didn't even know you. But I was slowly falling in love with you. At that time, I didn't know you were married yet. I didn't approach you because I had character issues and was still planning my revenge. One day, I asked Marge about you. She said you were married and I felt uneasy. I really wanted to get to know you better, but I didn't want to ruin your marriage. Another day, your husband met you for lunch. That's when I realized who he was. I did everything in my power not to beat the crap out of him again. If you were any other woman, I would have taken you in front of him by now. Just for revenge. Carly cried, folding her arms in front of her. I continued. I fell in love with you and I couldn't forcefully do that to the woman I loved. Now I am in deep confusion. I want to hurt your husband and not hurt you. I want to make love to you. I haven't made love in a long time. For the last year, all I've done is revenge. I think your husband has gone back to Rachel since they were childhood sweethearts, and now she is divorced. How do you feel about me, Carly? I need to know so I know what to do. I promise that no matter how you feel about me, I won't hurt you. I just can't do that right now. How do you feel about me, Carly? I need to know so I know what to do. I promise that no matter how you feel about me, I won't hurt you. I just can't do that right now. I know I'm a freak, an asshole, and a vindictive person. I'm implacable, but there's another side of me. One that hasn't shown itself to the world in a year. I want to show it to you. Please give me a chance to show you that side of me. I can be a kinder, gentler person to the right woman. For some reason deep inside of me, I know you are that woman. There's a good guy who wants out. Revenge is blocking his path. Help me, Carly. Help me get revenge on your husband. Then, if you want to, we can build a real loving life together. Oh my God, Kevin, so many things all at once. I have questions floating around in my head and right now I don't have any answers. I'm not even sure I know how I feel about you, my husband, or even myself. I need to think about everything you have told me before I can give you any answers. Please understand that I am not playing with you or pushing you away. I want to help you. It sounds like you're in a lot of pain inside, but I don't know, I just don't know. After a slightly upset dinner, I walked Carly to her car. I told her that I was sorry if I had upset her, 
but I felt that she needed to know the truth. I would do my best to work with her to work out our problems together. This might not be the right time to tell her about my growing feelings for her, but I would explode if I didn't express them to her. I just wanted her to know. She let me give her a little hug before she left. So far, I hadn't solved any of the problems, only made things worse. Maybe telling her about her husband's past wasn't the right thing to do. I have no idea what her thoughts were. I just hope everything ended well for her. The next day, I couldn't wait to see her at lunch. I had to know her feelings and thoughts. I went to the restaurant where we usually had lunch. I waited for her, but she never showed up. My God, what had I done? Had she had a fight with her husband? Was he trying to hurt her? If so, I'd kill that son of a bitch. Maybe she took a different route and just told him about me and who I was. God, her no-show had me worried. I didn't know if I should call her home or just wait another day. I was having a hard time finishing my workday. I tried my best to keep my mind off Carly. When I got home, the phone rang, and it was Carly. Her voice sounded upset. Kevin, I have to see you. I know I said I shouldn't come to see you, but things have changed. I want, I have to see you tonight. Can I come over to see you? Oh my God, Carly, I was so worried about you. I had such a hard time today after not seeing you at lunch. Did that bastard hurt you? If he did, I'm going to kill that son of a bitch. Yeah, come over right now. I'll be waiting for you here. As I hung up the phone, the doorbell rang. Who could it be, I thought. I opened the door and there stood Carly, smirking. I followed you home, but I had to figure out if you were just pouting your lips or if you really wanted to help me. When you answered the phone the way you did, I realized you were being honest with me. I'm sorry for the little test, but I had to make sure. God, I was so happy to see her. I hugged her tightly and she felt so good. I asked, why didn't you go to work today? She told me, last night I spent all evening trying to get my thoughts in order. Jim, my husband, came home late. As usual, he made excuses about being late at work. I tried to be affectionate with him, but he wanted no part of it. He said he was tired and was going to bed. I thought, if a man refuses to have sex with a woman like Carly, then he's either just enjoyed it or he's brain dead. Carly says, this morning I waited until Jim left for work and decided to do some detective work. I started going through my computer files looking for hidden files or emails that didn't belong. I work on computers at my job, so I'm pretty good at them. Thanks to the information you gave me, I was able to track down a few files. This is what I found. She handed me all kinds of information. She said she would explain to me so I didn't have to read all this detailed information. She looked at me and said, First of all, I have to tell you that I don't love Jim anymore. After all the information I have learned about him, I think I despise him. I don't like to be used, and that's one of my possible problems with you. I took her hands and held them. Then she said, I'm not sure how I feel about you. One part of me really cares about you. But the other part of me says, careful. He just wants to use you for his revenge and then drop you like a hot potato. So for now, I want to keep our relationship in a wait-and-see mode. If you care about me like you say you do, you'll wait until our lives are clearer and then we can move on. What do you say? I smiled at her and said, That's all I'm asking for, a chance to prove myself. I really care about you, and if I start acting too fast, please just tell me to slow down. Can we seal our deal with a kiss before we start your detective work? She gave me a big, goofy grin and said, No, now let's get started. My husband applied for this job here. He didn't just get transferred, he told me. He asked to be transferred. That was his first lie. It was his old hometown where he grew up. I didn't pay much attention to it at the time. I just figured he, like many people, just wanted to go back to his old places. I loved him, so I agreed to the move. He went to a reunion about 16 months ago. Was your ex-wife there, and if so, were you there? I had a family engagement at the time. It was my mom's birthday, so I went there instead of her. He told me that old reunions are usually boring. Come to think of it, my wife had a reunion. I was scheduled to go on a business trip out of town that weekend. I asked her if she wanted to come with me, but she said she wanted to see all her old friends. I never thought of that until now. Damn, you're a pretty good private investigator. Here's a copy of some of the letters between them shortly before the reunion. They're not love letters, but they definitely expected to see each other. And here are some letters after the reunion. As you can see, or at least read when you caught them having sex about four months later, this was not the first time they had met and had sex. They had been doing it for four months. 
I was pissed off, that damn whore, telling me, oh, honey, it's not what you think. It just happened. I thought I was done with my revenge on her, since we weren't married anymore, that I would only be getting revenge on Jim. But now everything had changed. Carly saw the hurt and meanness in my eyes. I told Carly that I wasn't mad at her at all, but the fact that my ex-wife had made me a cuckold really pissed me off. I then looked at Carly and said, I really need to be kissed right now to calm me down, or I'm going to punch a wall with my fist. I stood up and walked over to the wall. Stop, you idiot! I'm going to kiss you! I'm going to kiss you! She shouted. When we broke up the second time, she said, That's enough, tiger. I'm only human too. When we sat back down, I thanked her. She looked at me and said, It's my pleasure. Now let's get back to work. I can't stay here all night. We both laughed as we were thinking the same thing. Here are copies of my husband's cell phone records for the last year or so. As you can see, this number gets calls almost daily. I called the phone company and the number belongs to a Rachel Miller. It's my wife's maiden name. I didn't even know she took it. I also didn't know she had a cell phone. When was it purchased? Judging from my husband's phone records with that number, it was about a month before he was beaten up by a couple of thugs named Kevin. She smiled. That means she had the phone before you caught them. That might explain why they got away with it for so long and also why she didn't fight for the big bucks in the divorce. Some of that could have come out and wouldn't have helped her. What about you, Carly? How do you feel about that? It's mostly pride for me right now, but you're still married to that bastard. What do you want us to do? She looked at me, realizing I had said the word we instead of you. I want to take everything we have away from him. I want to make him regret doing this to me. I want to embarrass him in public. How do I do all this without turning into a whore or a harlot? I want to keep my pride and hopefully you. Carly, do you think you could live in the same house for a couple weeks and not give anything away? No problem. I just don't want to have sex with him. Other than that, I have no problem making a dinner or two. If he keeps seeing his girlfriend regularly, he'll be fine. Well, Carly, you need to go shopping first. We can go during lunch if you want. Make sure you use joint credit cards in both your names. We don't want you to get in trouble if you only use cards in his name. Buy yourself everything you've always wanted. Build up as much debt as you can. Take some cash advances and put the money in a savings account or buy bonds or stocks. Kevin, aren't you a stockbroker? Why aren't you doing the investing for me? I didn't want you to have any doubts about me. You are very dear to me and I want you to trust me. I can put up the money if you want. I just want you to know that I don't need anything. I'm here to help you. If at any point you decide to make love to me, it will be revenge for me. We decided that credit cards would be our starting point. When she got up to leave, I asked her if I would get any more kisses today. She put her arms around me, opened her mouth slightly, and kissed me. I felt like a teenager and pulled her body against my growing erection. She pressed against me with her pelvis. Then she pulled away with the words, Damn, you're good. I'll see you tomorrow at lunch. She smiled and got into the car. The next day, instead of lunch, we stopped by several banks. Using their joint credit cards, she took out thousands of dollars in cash advances. That would give her a month to make all the transfers before the credit card bills came due. She was smart. She didn't use any of the cards, just in case he used any of them. She discovered that one of the cards he used to charge his motel room twice a week. We fiddled with the bank for three days using seven different charge cards. I was picking up checks and investing all the money for her. I used tax-exempt government bonds and other accounts that would be difficult to withdraw money from. Carly asked me to put the accounts in her name so her husband couldn't get the money. But I made her a co-signer on the accounts so that I couldn't take the money without her signature. The co-signer was my idea. I wanted her to have peace of mind about the investments in me. I started checking the latest news about my ex. I couldn't find much. I gave Carly all the information I could find about her and she used it. She told me that Rachel now worked for the same company as her husband. Rachel was one of the company secretaries. Carly used her connections and found out where they spent their time when they weren't at work. They were getting sloppy. Since they had been cheating on each other for so long, they felt like no one noticed. Carly asked her friends to start taking pictures and recording everything that was going on. I learned that everyone loved Carly. All the other secretaries respected her. Whenever they had a computer problem, they called her. 
I learned that she was literally a computer geek without the looks of a geek. She went from office to office helping all the secretaries with their computer problems. They never felt belittled or laughed at because Carly always took the time to explain the procedure to them. They all felt protected by her. I didn't know about my revenge. How was I going to do it? I couldn't rape Carly, not now that she was the only good thing in my life. My ex-wife was out of my life, but I wouldn't mind getting a little revenge on her. After all, it had been a long-standing affair even before our divorce. But how and what could I do? Without Carly's help, I wasn't sure I could do it. Carly told me that she couldn't just have sex with me right now. If she did, she would be no better than my cheating wife or her husband. She cared about me, but she was still a married woman. I needed a plan. What to do, what to do? Like I said, I was a badass and had been for a year. I played sports and kept myself in good physical shape. I had, to, I had a lot of friends of questionable character. Frankly, they were pimps and prostitutes. I was their investment broker. Together, we made a lot of money. They made money and I invested it for them. Yeah, I've had a few prostitutes. Believe it or not, some of them were very nice people. Of course, others weren't so nice. Fortunately, I knew which ones were which. They were really nice to be friends with. They attracted a lot of clients to me simply because I didn't belittle them. I may not have agreed with their lifestyles, but they were people too. I called one of my pimp friends and asked him for a favor. When I finished explaining it to him, he laughed out loud and said, Man, you're a bad bastard. You know it's going to cost you money. There's no freebies in this world. I told him, No problem, Big Louie, as long as it's done right. You might even get a bonus. Good thing my plan was finally starting to materialize. Carly and I got together one evening to plan our operation. She was worried that I might still want to take her in public, which went against everything she believed in. She really was a special woman with good character. I promised her with God as my witness that I would never hurt or dishonor her. She simply gifted me with her patented smile that can melt ice and said, I think I've fallen head over heels in love with you. Just thought you should know. I asked her to take the next couple of days as vacation, sick leave, or time off. It didn't change anything, except that we only had a couple of days to organize this operation. Everything had to run like clockwork to be successful. So what's your plan, Kevin? How are you going to get revenge and not use me? What do you need me to do? First, stop asking so many questions, I smiled at her. You said they have room 109 booked for next Wednesday. Is that correct? Yeah, it's booked until 10 o'clock at night. Seems like they always book the same room and always for about five hours. Not the best motel, but they have to rent it by the hour. Funny thing is, from the way Jim made love to me, he could rent it for 15 minutes and save a lot of money. Okay, tomorrow I'll book the same room for Wednesday morning. I'm going to install a remote-controlled VCR. While I'm doing that, you need to go see my lawyer. Sally Hawk is the best take-no-prisoners lawyer. Here's what you need to write. It will be your divorce decree stating that you want a divorce under such and such circumstances. And on Wednesday night, you'll have to get Jim's signature on it. How do you know he'll sign it, Kevin? And if he says no, what do I do? Don't worry, Carly, I'm pretty sure he'll sign it. The consequences are too great. Do you want me to tell you the whole plan, or do you want to wait and be surprised? Oh my God, Kevin, you're making me nervous. I don't think I can wait to hear anything. You seem so anxious, and it's affecting me. The only thing I want to rub off on you is me. You're so special to me that I want you as much as I want this revenge. We're going to get our revenge. That goes for both of us. Then I hope you will feel for me the way I feel for you. Then my revenge will be complete. Are we going to completely ruin their lives, Kevin? I don't really like that. I just want to get even. We'll throw their lives into chaos, but their lives will go on unless they're stupid enough to sign the divorce papers. Okay, honey, here's the plan. They usually meet between 5 and 6 o'clock. Since Jim usually gets there about a half hour before Rachel, we're going to work on him. My friend Big Louie is going to stop by to see Jim. Sally and Sue will be with him. They're prostitutes who aren't working right now because they're sick. Big Louie needs him to take care of his women. The last thing Jim would want to do is cross Big Louie. How do you know these people, Kevin? They are my clients. They bring in a lot of money and I help them invest it. Of course, when Rachel shows up, she'll have a choice. Entertain her lover Jim or Big Louie will get his share of the fun. 
Now during all this, you and I will sit in the van and operate the remote control. And when the time is right, you'll walk in, catch them doing it, and ask for a divorce. Then you'll walk over to the closet and give Jim a choice. Sign the divorce papers or walk away with the tape and send a copy to his employers and company headquarters. The choice is his to make. After he makes his choice, you will return to the van. Big Louie will be there to protect you from any harm. He won't leave until you do. So what do you say, Carly? Will it work? She smiled at me and said, You do it more for me than you do for yourself, don't you? God, you know there's another side to you and I'm starting to really like it. Let's go! Over the next few days, we got everything set up. Carly met with Sally Hawk, our attorney, who said she wanted to be there herself to serve Jim with the divorce papers. There was no question that she would put his signature on the legal document. She was the best-known divorce attorney in the state. Sally said it was such a great plan and that we had sent her many cases over the years. She was a good friend and just wanted to get involved. Big Louie was ready. We paid him up front and told him he'd get another 500 if everything went well. He just smiled and said, No problem. I went to the motel and got a room for Wednesday afternoon. The receptionist said I had to leave by 4 p.m. because the room was already taken. I met up with Carly and we went to lunch at a very nice restaurant. And then it was discovered that my ex-sister-in-law was having lunch with some guy who was not her husband. I told Carly who it was and she asked if it would interfere with our plans. I told her that the man with Karen was not her husband and seeing that she didn't know Carly, we could enjoy our lunch. When Karen saw me, she was horrified. Caught in the act, so to speak. I could see she was very nervous and wondered who I was with. Carly looked great. Breasts sticking out. No bra, skirt four inches above the knee. Carly realized quickly. She moved to the seat next to me instead of across from me. Then she turned my face toward hers and kissed me. She put all her strength into that kiss. It wasn't just Karen watching, but everyone who could see us. Carly pulled away and smiled. Do you think that got anyone's attention? Then she kissed my open mouth again. She stopped when the waiter made some strange noises. I looked at the waiter and said, She's a beautiful woman, isn't she? He replied, Yes, that's her, sir. She belongs to me, doesn't she, sweetheart? I said, looking at her. It's only you, baby. You're the only one I belong to, she smiled. God, I hoped it was true, but I knew she was putting on an act so my ex-sister-in-law would have something to say to Rachel. Karen never came to visit. God, I wonder why. Carly and I finished lunch and headed out the door. We went into an electronics store and bought the equipment we needed. As we were leaving the store, she said that the kiss at the restaurant was real. She said she meant it, even though she did it to mess with my ex-sister-in-law. It was Wednesday morning. Carly and I were on edge. Any sting operation puts nerves on edge. Every detail has to be timed and done right. There's not much room for error. Carly met with Sally to make sure the divorce papers were in order. I went to the motel room and set up the video equipment. I parked the rented van at the front of the building so it wouldn't be conspicuous in the evening. Together with Carly, I headed over to Big Louie's. When he saw Carly, he almost crapped his pants. Geez, man, what kind of doll is that? He asked. I looked at him and introduced Carly. I know she was nervous, but Big Louie had a tendency to have that effect on people. He was six feet tall and about 320 pounds, blacker than the ace of spades, but he was a very smart guy. He had a master's degree in business. His fortune was in the millions. I know because I was his financial broker. He saw that she was nervous and told her, Don't worry, little lady. No one is going to hurt you. Kevin is my friend and I respect the man. I will make sure you are protected. No one is going to hurt you. She felt a little better and thanked him for his kindness. Louis said he and his girls would show up around 5.15 p.m. He wanted to give Jim a few minutes to get organized. Earlier that day, Carly put her computer knowledge to use. She sent an email to both Jim and Rachel, informing them that a note had been received from the other. It read, Honey, I have a special treat for you today. Please don't ask any questions when you get here. I know you'll be surprised. Just say yes. Also, to make it special, let's not communicate for the rest of this day. I want you to remember this night for the rest of your life. I love you. Me. At 4.45 p.m., Carly and I got into our van and waited. At exactly 5 p.m., Jim arrived and walked into the room. 
Carly and I got into our van and waited. At exactly 5 p.m., Jim arrived and walked into the room. We were very nervous. This was a big event for us. At 5.15 p.m., we watched as Big Louie, along with Sally and Sue, walked up to the room. When they knocked on the door, we turned on the cameras. We didn't want to start recording until the action started. We had two cameras, one above the lights and one inside the smoke alarm. Incredible image quality from the pinhole camera. We'll have to remember to go back tomorrow and get the cameras. Carly and I were nervous as hell when Big Louie knocked on the door. When he opened the door, we heard Jim's question, Who are you? Louie explained, I was paid to bring my two women into this room. Jim said, There must be some mistake. Then Louis asked, Do you have any trouble entertaining my ladies, buddy? Are you Jim Nelson? Jim replied that he did, but he wasn't expecting company. Louis told him that they had been paid in advance to come to this room and do it to the occupants. Louis told him that they weren't a charitable organization and they wouldn't give the money back. He then squeezed his way inside. We started the tape. Jim was nervous. You could see it on the tape. He thought it was a surprise Rachel had for him after he got the email, so he agreed and took off his clothes. A little information about Sally and Sue. Sally was black and Sue was Caucasian. They were really beautiful women, even though they worked as prostitutes. They were good at what they did. Of course, the only problem was that they were sick with something at the time. Big Louie just leaned back in the big chair and watched. The girls were good. Carly was watching through our remote control. She was both sad and happy at the same time. Sad that her husband of five years had decided to cheat on her, but happy that her revenge had begun. There was a knock on the door, and Big Louie opened it to see Rachel standing there. He told her to come in. She asked what was going on when she saw her boyfriend Jim. As she entered the room, she didn't know what to think. All she knew was that Jim had sent her an email, letting her know that something special was going to happen that night. There was a knock on the door of our van. It was Sally Hawk, our lawyer. She asked how things were going and then looked at the monitor. It was clear. Big Louie was waiting outside the door to protect Carly and Sally Hawk in case they needed him. Both Carly and Sally went to the door. Carly was the first to enter the room. You goddamn son of a bitch! You worthless piece of shit! Carly used every swear word she'd ever learned. I want a divorce and I want it now. Jim and Rachel saw Carly in the doorway yelling at them. They knew they had been caught red-handed. There was no way they could explain how to get out of the situation. Carly kept talking. Why, Jim? Why wasn't I good enough for you that you got involved with that slut? I knew you were having an affair. I hoped you had gotten rid of it by now, but no, you went on and on. I'm done. I want a divorce, and as soon as possible. That's when Sally Hawk walked in. Jim, this is my attorney, Sally Hawk. She's going to tell you the terms of the divorce. I expect to start the divorce tonight so I can cut you out of my life as soon as possible and you can have your girlfriend. I'm Sally Hawk, Carly's attorney. The terms of the divorce are very simple and straightforward. 1. Carly will be going home tonight and she will have 24 hours to pack all the things she wants. You will not be there tonight. After 24 hours, she will never return to this premises. This is an apartment rented in your name, so you can have her. 2. You will be responsible for all bills due and payable up to today. This includes all credit cards that are in your name or belong to both of you. Carly will give you all joint cards tonight and will never use them again. She will only be responsible for the cards that are in her name. 3. Each of you has your own car, and each of you will be responsible for insurance and payments, as well as the maintenance of your car. 4. Finally, your savings account with a balance of $8,000 will go to Carly. She will withdraw the money from the account tomorrow. You have a 401000 with over $80,000 in it. Carly has $15,000. You will both be able to keep your own 401000. If you agree to these terms, you will have to sign the ordinance tonight. It is irrevocable. None of you will be able to change anything once it is signed. Carly has already signed it. Just sign on the line where it says husband. Sally held out the document for him to look over and sign. Rachel sat and stared at it. Jim said, what if I don't sign it today? What will you do? Sally said, the document you are holding in your hands will be canceled in five minutes when I leave. Then we'll go to court and demand the same benefits. 
only we'll make sure we get half of your 401k as well. That's a good deal for you. I'd advise you to take it. Carly walked over to the closet, opened it, and pulled out a VCR tape. This is a tape of today's events. It will become part of our divorce case. Jim said, I'm not that stupid. You can't use that tape. You took it without permission. Sally started laughing. You really are a dumb ass. We won't use it in the divorce, but we'll make copies and send it to your company and your company's office. I'm sure they don't approve of their married employees having affairs. Jim took a couple steps in their direction as Big Louie re-entered the room. You weren't going to hurt my friends, were you, Jim? Jim backed away. Well, Jim, you have three minutes to make your decision and then we're out of here, Sally stated. Rachel turned to Jim and said in almost a whisper, Jim, Sally Hawk was my husband's attorney and I didn't get a dime. They say she's one of the best in the state. You'd better take that offer or you'll find yourself in a boat without a paddle. Besides, we'll lose our jobs if this tape falls into the wrong hands. Sally looked at Jim. One minute and we're out of here. See you in court. As they turned to leave, Jim shouted, Wait! I'll sign, but only if I get the tape. Carly looked at Big Louie and handed him the tape. After Sally and I get out of here, you can give this tape to this asshole. She also handed him an envelope with the promised dollar 500 bonus. Sally repeated what she had said before. This document is irrevocable. If you have any questions, you must contact me. You must not disturb Carly in any way or I will arrest you and put you in jail. If you understand everything I have said, sign the document and I will give you a copy along with the tape and joint credit cards. Remember, Carly has 24 hours to take whatever she wants from the apartment. Your divorce is considered a no-fault divorce and should be finalized within two months. Jim signed the papers and Sally gave him a copy. Carly and Sally then walked out the door. Shortly afterward, we saw Big Louie hand the tape to Jim and then walk out and join his girls. Carly and Sally returned to the van with wide smiles on their faces. Carly gave me a quick kiss. Everyone seemed so happy until I heard what Sally wanted to say. Kevin, until the divorce is final, you can't see Carly. We can't have anyone seeing you two together. As long as you are not bound to each other, everything has to go according to plan. I know we have a few battles to fight over credit card charges from the last two weeks, but the paperwork's on our side, unless someone thinks Carly's trying to defraud the banks. That's why I let Jim take his 401k. There's enough money in there for the banks to go after Jim if he tries to file bankruptcy. There's also no money there in Carly's name. Only $8,000 that she has to withdraw tomorrow. I suggest you keep the money in the same bank, but only in your name. That will reduce the number of questions from the bank. Sally continued. There shouldn't be any more problems after the divorce, and you two can date if you want to. It will be up to you. Kevin, you told me that your employer has asked you to go to another state for a couple months and start a brokerage firm. I'd advise you to agree to that as soon as possible. Carly will be fine. I'll be here to keep an eye on her. I hate to say it, but you're Carly's biggest problem right now. Of course, I can't force you to do anything, but I strongly advise it. Carly was crying, and I just hugged her. I knew that everything Sally had said was true. The only problem now was me. The only weak link in the chain. I kissed Carly goodbye and told her to contact me after the divorce. I would be waiting for her. Sally and Carly got out of the van. Sally drove Carly home so she could pick up anything she needed. They had gotten the truck earlier in the day so Carly could haul whatever she wanted. Sally said I could call her if I needed to talk or find out anything about Carly. After the girls left, I looked at the monitor again and noticed that Jim and Rachel had left. I walked out and went back into the room and gathered my equipment. I grabbed my backup copy of the recording in case we needed it in the future. Funny how no one ever asks if we have a second copy. Two cameras, two recording devices. I packed it all up and headed home. I was very happy for Carly and sad for me. The next day I came in and talked to my supervisor. I told him about the temporary job. I was scheduled to leave for Chicago on Friday. I hoped that things would work out for Carly. She really was a wonderful person. I guess she had her revenge. I was the only one left standing. It was fun to help Carly. I really loved her. When I arrived in Chicago, I jumped headfirst into work. We were opening a new brokerage firm and starting from scratch. If I wasn't working, I was sitting in my room sulking at Carly. For the first couple weeks, I kept wondering if Carly was okay. One day, I called Sally Hawk. 
She was glad to hear from me. She said everything was going well. As they expected, Jim had hired a lawyer and wanted to contest the ruling. The lawyer told him he was barking up the wrong tree, and if he wanted to take the fight to Sally, he'd better find a new lawyer. Jim was throwing around accusations against Carly. He said that she had set him up, but when it came to proof, he had none. Sally told Jim that if he continued to accuse Carly of anything, she would sue him. She was tired of his whining. Sally also revealed that Jim's lawyer had mentioned that both Jim and Rachel had contracted syphilis. They had to get shots and not make love until it was gone. Otherwise, they could have gotten the new strain from each other. Finally, Sally said that Carly had moved into a nice apartment near her work. She had taken about half of the things from the old apartment to set up the new one. She was told not to talk about me for fear someone would connect us. Of course, she hasn't dated, but so far it's only been a few weeks. In a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Carly, Sally said she really missed me and that I was a really nice guy. I wish I could say that the time while I was in Chicago flew by, but it didn't. I really didn't feel much better than I did before this whole revenge thing started. At least then I could see Carly every day. For Thanksgiving, I went to Michigan to visit my parents. I needed to get away for a few days. It was nice to see my family. I took my sister with me to the Christmas store and bought everyone in the family something. I went to the jewelry store and bought an engagement and wedding ring for Carly, hoping that someday she would say yes to me. After the Thanksgiving holiday, I headed back to Chicago. I figured I would be there for about three more weeks. I was cold, windy, and lonely in Chicago, all things I could think of. The lights of the city looked beautiful, but not when I had no one to share them with. We, meaning me and the new agents, got the business off the ground. Things were going pretty well. Lots of clients came in wanting to invest before the end of the year. When I got back to Ohio, my boss met me. He complimented me on the success of the new firm. From a work standpoint, everything was great. I just hoped that things would go well in my personal life. As soon as I got back to my apartment, which was two days before Christmas, I called Sally Hawk. I didn't even have Carly's number since she had moved. Sally was so happy to hear from me. She asked about the business and I said it was going well. I asked her about Carly and how the divorce was going. She hesitated before telling me that the divorce had been finalized two days before. I asked her for Carly's phone number. She said she had no right to give it to me but would call Carly and let her know I was back in town. I thanked her and she wished me good luck. I wasn't sure how I felt. Carly was now divorced. I had no idea what she'd been thinking about the past few months since I'd left for Chicago. I had the bright idea to stop by our favorite restaurant where we met for lunch every day. I went there hoping to see her. My friend Marsha saw me and waved me over. I invited her to join me. Maybe I could learn something. Marsha started saying how nice it was to see me again. She had heard that I was starting a new agency for a company in Chicago. We made the usual chit-chat and talked about the holidays that were starting tomorrow. She told me about her family and how well everything was going. I asked her if Carly worked for the company. Marsha replied that she did, but that she and her husband had recently divorced. It had happened so fast. She said that Carly must have taken it very hard because she doesn't seem so happy now. She refuses to date and spends most of her time at work. Marcia said she feels really sorry for her, but she has to deal with it on her own. Everyone still loves her and hopes she finds the right guy someday. She deserved better than a cheating husband who got caught with another woman. I asked Marcia if Carly was working today. She replied that she was, but she got the call about an hour ago, and instead of lunch, she left for the afternoon. She won't be back until next week after Christmas. I wished Marsha a Merry Christmas and asked her to say hi to her family for me. Then I got up and headed home. Nothing on the answering machine. I was starting to get depressed when the phone rang. I jumped up to answer it thinking it was Carly, but it wasn't her. It was another telemarketer demanding money. I just slammed the damn phone down. I knew she should have called me about her investment. But come to think of it, she didn't need to do that. We had other agents who could update my files for clients while I was gone. The agents and I exchanged information about new cases that came in for my clients. I could call the office to see if any action had been taken on Carly's accounts. I quickly called the office but got a voicemail. I looked at the clock and was surprised that it was already 5.12 p.m. Damn, damn, damn. The offices would be closed until Monday for the holidays. Over the holiday weekend, I was in the dark. All the offices were closed. Holy crap. My emotions were starting to get out of control. Did I have it or had I lost it? Damn it, I needed to know something. 
How could I get through this weekend without knowing anything? The phone rang again. I ran over to it and answered it. It was Sally, my attorney. She was calling to let me know that she had managed to relay the message that I had gotten back to Carly. She also wanted to let me know that everything regarding the divorce was finalized. Jim could no longer file motions. He tried, but he lost them all. He had to cash out more than half of his 401 k to meet the bank's credit card requirements. I told Sally that she was a true friend and a pleasure to do business with. I thanked her for the information and wished her a Merry Christmas. There was a knock at the door. When I opened it, I found it was Mary, my neighbor. She had been picking up my mail and cleaning the apartment while I was away. I invited her to come in for a few minutes. She was a nice older woman who cleaned apartments for extra income. She usually cleaned mine about twice a week. She handed me my mail and handed me a tray of homemade cookies for the holidays. I asked her to hold on a second because I had a gift for her too. I walked into the house and handed her an envelope with three crisp $100 bills for Christmas. She smiled and thanked me and then left. There was no shortage of nice ladies like Mary in this world. She was a pleasure to be around. I was hungry, so I called the local pizza place and ordered a pizza. I asked for it to be delivered. I didn't want to go anywhere else today. I asked them to stop by the grocery store and buy me a 12-pack of Miller Lite beer. That's the beauty of small-town living, the so-called home comforts of home. I decided to turn on the TV to watch the latest news and wait for my pizza to arrive. Half an hour later, the doorbell rang. I got up to get my pizza. When I opened the door, there stood Carly with a big smile on her face. Tears came to my eyes and I said, I thought you were the pizza delivery guy. She smiled. Sorry to disappoint you. No pizza, just me. I pulled her into the living room, pulled her against me, and hugged her. God, she always felt good. I've missed you, Carly. Missed you terribly. I'm so happy to see you again. She was about to say something when the doorbell rang again. I opened it, and there was the pizza man with my beer and pizza. I quickly paid him and closed the door. Then I turned to Carly again. Are you hungry? We have pizza and beer. I took them in my hands. Carly looked at me, still smiling. You know, you really are a funny guy. I've already prepared myself for what I'm going to say, and I come here and I can't even think of anything. I need to tell you a couple things and then we can eat the pizza while it's still hot. I know you hate cold pizza. Okay, big guy, I missed you too. In case you haven't heard, I'm a divorced woman now. I just found out today that you're back. I didn't want to leave you a phone message. It would have been too cliche. I needed to talk to you in person. I left work early after Sally called me and told me you were home. I went out to get you some kind of Christmas present. You'll see it after we finish eating. It's not every day you splurge and buy me dinner. So let's eat. When I was buying us a couple paper plates, I asked her what a like gift was. She smiled her ice-melting smile and said, You'll see. Now eat your pizza and pass me a beer. She laughed. While we ate, we talked about her job and how well it was going. I told her about the agency we had started and explained the details. We both avoided the serious questions. They were bound to come up soon. When we finished our pizza, Carly looked at me and asked, Are you ready for your as-if gift? I smiled and said, Yeah, where is that? Carly held out a small bag the size of a small lunch bag. I'll be right back, she exclaimed. When she left the room, I put the pizza and beer on the counter, reached into the drawer that held the ring I'd bought for her, pulled it out, and slipped it into my pocket. She called out from the bedroom, Are you ready? I shouted back, I think so. When she walked in, she said, I bought this as if for you today. If you want, you can unwrap it. She was standing in a red silk lace bra. She even had a little red silk lace bow in her hair. She looked at me and said, I am no longer a married woman and now I will not cheat on any husband. If you want your present, we can go to the bedroom. Tears were streaming down my face. I looked at her and said, On one condition? I reached into my pocket, pulled out a ring and said, If you marry me. She cried and ran up to me and I began to hug her soft, warm body. She cried out, Yes, I will marry you. Yes, 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 God. How I have fallen in love with you. I picked her up in my arms and carried her to the bedroom. That night was incredible. I'd never been so exhausted in my entire life. I rolled off her, she snuggled against me, and we fell asleep. We must have slept for quite a long time. When we woke up, the house and the room were completely dark. It had been a long time since I had woken up next to a woman I wanted next to me. 
I needed to get up and pee. I couldn't wait any longer. Carly showered and cleaned up, and I stuck the leftover pizza in the oven for a while. It always tasted better out of the oven. While we ate the pizza, we talked some more. I asked Carly when she wanted to get married. She replied that she wanted it to happen as soon as possible. She didn't want to wait. By then, it was about 10 o'clock in the evening. I called Sally Hawk at her house. She answered by asking, What's the matter, Kevin? She must have had caller ID. I told her that Carly and I had a problem, and she might be able to help solve it since she was a lawyer. What's the matter, Kevin? I'll help if I can. Carly and I want to get married as soon as possible, but tomorrow is Christmas Eve and we need a judge. To have him marry us. Do you know anyone? Sally started laughing. So Carly called you, huh? I'm happy for both of you. Meet me at the courthouse tomorrow morning. We'll get our marriage license and then we'll come to my house. You see, Mr. Hawk, my husband is a judge. I know he's going to marry you. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock sharp. The next morning, Carly, who was beautifully dressed and I, dressed in a suit, met Sally at the registrar's office. We got our license and went to Sally's house to get married. Her husband seemed like a nice enough guy for a judge. You never know what to expect with lawyers and judges, but we knew Sally was the best. Carly didn't have many relatives left in the area. Just a few distant cousins. So we decided to go to Michigan and surprise my family with a new wife. To say they were happy or overjoyed would be putting it mildly. Better to say thrilled. They all loved Carly. And how could they not? She was definitely part of the family. Wow, Christmas turned out pretty good after all. We had to move back after Christmas. We both had jobs and now we had to move. We decided to live in my apartment. It was rented for a month anyway. Every day after work, we would move some of her stuff over to my place. It was fun doing almost everything together. The girls where she worked were so happy for her. They said the old Carly was back. Marsha was a little shocked when she found out I was a new husband, remembering that I was a badass and very vindictive. I remember Carly telling her, Don't worry, Marsha. He's a puppy and I love him very much. The big New Year's Eve party was approaching. Almost all the successful businessmen in the neighborhood were attending. I asked Carly, Honey, do you want to go to the party of the year? It will be our first time for everyone to see us together. I want to show you off. Besides, our ex-spouses might be there. Carly thought for a moment, then looked at me and said, Kevin, I love you with all my heart and I want everyone to know it. Yes, we will go to the New Year's Eve party, my dear husband. I watched her start to gather herself. We went to a New Year's Eve party. Carly looked amazing. She was wearing a red blouse that matched her lace bra perfectly. Everyone wanted us to sit at their table, my boss and his group, Carly's friends, and even the few friends I had. Sally and Judge Hawk invited us to their table. We decided to sit right there. I looked at Sally and told her that I had never seen a lawyer look so good. She looked amazing. They introduced us to everyone else at their table. It was mostly judges and their wives, and they all seemed like pretty nice people. The music was loud, but it was New Year's Eve. Carly and I got up and did all the slow dances. Other men asked Carly to dance, but she always replied, Not this year. I only want to dance with my husband. This was our year to be together. The only exception we made was I did one dance with Sally and Carly did one with the judge. They were special friends. While dancing, we found ourselves next to Karen, my ex-wife's sister. As it happened, we almost ran into Karen and her husband on the crowded dance floor. She looked over and said, Oh my God, that's Kevin. I looked at her and said, Good evening, Karen, and Happy New Year to you. Then I said, I would like to introduce you to my wife, Carly. Carly, this is Karen and her husband. He reached out to shake Carly's hand and said, Bob, my name is Bob. Carly gave her a patented smile and said, Nice to meet you, Bob and Karen. Carly then looked at Karen and said, Didn't we meet before at Robson's restaurant on Old Highway 40 about two months ago? Bob replied, No, this place is too expensive for our tastes. Karen turned white and said, It was nice meeting you two. We should get back to our seats. We knew she had to come back and tell Jim and Rachel we were here. We looked over at their table. Rachel knocked over her glass when she realized I was there. We saw them quickly turn around and look at us. We heard Rachel say, Oh my God, Jim, he's with your ex-wife. 
Jim almost fell off his chair trying to turn and look. Karen looked at Rachel and said, Rachel, he introduced her as his wife. Jim said, That son of a bitch set us up. They took over $100,000 from us. Plus, they set us up to get an STD. How did they find out about everything? Rachel said, Kevin told me he's going to get even with us one day. Jim said, Maybe we'll try to get them back in court. Karen laughed. Come on, you two. You guys see who they're sitting with? Sally Hawk and half a dozen judges. And if that's not enough, Jim, he can kick your ass starting tomorrow. Make no mistake, Kevin is a real man. And judging by his wife, she's a real woman. They make a great couple. It was past midnight, and the crowd was beginning to thin. Sally and the judge said goodnight to each other, as did the people at their table. So after the next dance, Carly and I decided to sit in a booth near Rachel, Jim, and their group. Carly excused herself to go to the restroom. When she came back, she saw Jim and Rachel kind of watching her and me out of the corner of her eye. Carly asked me if I was ready. I looked at her and asked, Ready for what? To go home, honey? No, Kevin, you're ready for revenge. Then she said loud enough for everyone at the table to hear, Happy New Year, lover. Who says revenge can't be sweet? Happy New Year. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. So subscribe to the channel and watch the next video.